Hello folks, it is time for some hobby nightmares, but first things first, I've been walking around my office today generally admiring some lovely, lovely models, and one of them is one that's been painted by a good friend of mine who asked to do a bit of an advertisement on the channel a little while ago, and let me tell you, I did this a few weeks ago and people went batty for it, look at this guy, I can't get enough of this guy. Literally one of the best looking models I've seen in person and it's mine. It's mine to own simply because I did a order with GrimDarkPainting.com Fantastic painting service If you want to uh, get involved and get 10% off of your next painting service use the promo code Northern Exile And any of your quotes from him you can either email email him over at info at GrimDarkPainting.com or head over to his website where all of his prices are there. I know the last time we did one of these, the prices weren't up yet. Now they are. The prices are all there, ready for you to have a little peruse of. And if you want to have a little close look at that model, here we are. Let's take a little tour around my favourite model at the moment. And this model will be getting used in summer when we do our big event get-together. And we have, uh, you know, a kill team campaign. I'm thinking maybe it's going to be a combat patrol tournament campaign sort of a thing anyway this guy will be leading my forces on the day as a, a little bit more of an advertisement for grim dark painting an amazing service this was done to me in a few days literally i gave him the barest brief i mean literally i was the customer from hell i literally said listen it's gonna kind of look like this you know what i mean with with uh, like i want him to have a claw and a sword and him to be a terminator done and this is what he did. He took my law. He took my ideas. He, he he looked into what I wanted. And he did this. Which is, I have to say, exactly what I wanted. So well done to him. And if you want to get your own model like this, make sure you head over to GrimDarkMating.com and make sure you get your quote. And you quote Northern Exile there for 10% off of your painting fees. Cool. Now, let's jump right in to the hobby nightmares. Because we've got a few to get through here today. First of which is from Evan. Thank you very much, Evan. I hope you're doing well. And he says, Hello, North. My name is Evan, and the rest of the names are changed. And this is my hobby nightmare. All right, let's dive in, shall we? Let's dive in. I got into the hobby in high school. My friends and I had been playing D&D, and my friend, Gray's dad, talked us into playing Rogue Trader. So... We spent a couple of weeks building out our characters and vessels. We had a rattling navigator, a noble captain, and me, the tech priest. Those of you who don't know, Rogue Trader is essentially um, what can be a a, a D and D like game set in 40k, essentially. All right. We went on a mission, and accidentally. Well, let me just put it on there. We went on a mission. And accidentally awoke a tomb world. Needless to say, we couldn't outrun the Necron menace, and our entire crew of scouts were decimated. Oh my god, trying to give us a chance to evacuate. We had a lot of fun, but decided the system wasn't for us. So Grey, John, Grey's friend, and I decided to start playing Warhammer together. Grey didn't end up liking 8th edition Warhammer. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So John and I got into the game and kind of by ourselves. He was enraptured by the Primaris, and I liked the Orcs and Admech. So I purchased a box set of Skatari. Yeah, typical, typical um, hobby indecision there. It was funny. I was uh, 75 cents short on the first box, and Mason from my local Warhammer store just covered it. So I came back in the next week and got another box and a tech priest. After a couple of games, I got bored of Admech and, re and I was really burnt out on painting them. Then I bought my first basilisk. This was the beginning of my love affair with the guard. Dude, the basilisk is literally the most guard thing I've ever seen in my life. Just a big ass cannon. Big ass cannon on wheels, I love it. Very do does resemble like, like World War II era artillery. Just brilliant stuff. I quickly built and painted 240 Cadians for my army. After discovering Mordian Glory, and definitely went overboard 
but I always wanted a huge army. So that's what I did. I bought tons of monopose ones and sprayed them with Xandri dust. Painted their skin tan, armor red and guns black. And hit them with a, with a Agrax wash. Busted the army out in the weekend and now... Since I have been, uh, uh, I've made a bunch more balanced guard army and recently just hit 14,000 points of Imperium between my guard, knights, templars and inquisition. Photo included on the bottom of this email. I know there is, uh, you guys will want to see these because I downloaded them last night, the, the, the video, uh, the, the images and I didn't put them on here, but, but they do look really, really, really good. So let me just, um. Get them out of here for you. Much harder to do this on a laptop than it is on a desktop. I guess that goes with the territory, right? Uh, let me just let me download their lovely stuff. Screenshot them over here. Bang. Right. Let's have a little look, shall we? At the guard. F like 14,000 points for a beginner is insane. You must be like somebody who is... Shall we say quite well off? I don't know, dude. That's a lot. That's a lot for anybody. But these are some good looking knights, man. Good looking models. Do a few more here. For those of you who wanna who are interested in what the army looks like. I know nearly all of you will be. Dude, this looks chaosy to me. I don't know why. <clears throat> Let's get a, a few uh, close ups. Oh, hell, dude. Are you sure you don't collect chaos? Dude, Baylacor just looks brilliant. Whatever Baylacor is and whatever he's doing, he looks the business. It's just my favourite model right now. He really is. For somebody who loves, like, you know, Grey Knights and the Imperium and stuff, Baylacor is my favourite model, and that should say a lot. That should say a lot. I don't think he gets anywhere near the attention that he should get for how cool a model he is. I'm thinking these are from your games, right? Look at the size of him. It's incredible. Absolutely. We'll do one more after this. Okay, that's the lion, is it? Okay. We need to make sure we're doing uh, two thin coats, not one big blodgy one. Um, and last but not least... Bang! All 14,000 points in one picture. Oh my days. Oh my bloody days. I'll leave that up for a bit. But that is uh, astounding. Dude, that, that is a lot of models for a beginner. That is uh, an extreme amount of models for a beginner. My god. Anyway. The list I had selected was extremely powerful. I had no clue how, was, how strong it was until it was done. But John and I... Had a falling out over it, and I refused to buy six lemon russes on the spot to mix up my list. After he, after he had a talk with some of the folks on Reddit, yeah, that, that's the worst thing, man. Uh, when two new hobby people get involved in in 40k, and one of them starts reading Reddit, and the people on Reddit start telling them how to enjoy their hobby, and they take it as read that's what you're supposed to do, and so they make all of their friends, or or if they've got one good friend who's into the hobby. That one friend who wants to be in the hobby, he makes them do all the things that Reddit says they need to do. That's not true, dude. You enjoy your hobby how you want to do it. But enjoying your hobby how you want to do it is an advanced skill in itself, to be honest with you. Anyway. His crimson fists just kept getting uh, bodied. And I felt bad. So I offered to add one or two and, and even kit bash some rough riders together. Because that is a ton of infantry and I was getting bored of it anyway. Vast oversimplification, but we drifted apart slowly until 2020. And in the time that we, that we couldn't play games, we just stopped hanging out. We tried Tabletop Simulator, but it just wasn't the same. 
And after we got back to school, we were graduating. So we had a little party as a group. And then went our separate ways. Okay. So this is you and... Let me just go back. Um... Let me just have a little look to here. It's you and John, right? I think it's just you and John. Yes. Yes. All right. Okie dokie. This story was a couple of years after that. Now, my new best friends were now my roommates. We can call them Lee, Adrian, and Hannah. After Lee, Adrian, and I finished our Necromunda campaign, we started at home in 2020 on Yak Tribe. I don't know what that means. We had an office for our business I work for where we played. The campaign was set inside of my guard's transportation ship and the finale was trying to fight off a wave after wave of orc boys, knobs and the final boss, the war boss. I decided to pick up D&D again after that, after Hannah, Adrian's girlfriend, had watched Stranger Things for the first time and was asking me about it since I had so many D&D books. She asked me if I, would, if I would be the dungeon master. I said I'd be excited to DM again and to bear with me as I hadn't played the system in a while. So, that next Friday, we rolled up characters and had a one-shot opening session. We had a tiefling witcher, Lee, a goliath barbarian, Adrian, a halfling monk who was a trader, Xander, and a drow sorcerer, Hannah. They were each talked into writing at least a basic backstory, and Hannah wanted to be the elder daughter of a powerful drow. So I wrote it into my Novum de, de Concilio, the Council of Nine Liches, that, uh, that is like the UN for my world, but basically pretty useful. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. I agree with you on many of those points, but yeah, let's go on again. Um, as, was, as was the witch's father. Okay, This campaign was a dream come true. So much character, so many fun moments, including the fact that in the world, the word Bong came from the barbarian's name. As a child, he was hit in the head with a bell. Xander's character became a local lord's personal glassblower and named the Glass Bong after him. They leveled up bit by bit, seeing the world fighting dragons, pirates and armies. After years of in-game adventures, they became plane walkers and were thrown into the War of the Spark on Ravnica. And it was a fun mission. Again, I like your writing style, dude. But none of this has any context. None of us know what Ravnica is. None of us know, do you know what I mean? You, you, you're, you're very rambly. Anyway, I, I just had to take the events and rewrite them. After they returned, they began to find these strange metal animals that would randomly attack them. And this led into the next arc of the Ph uh, Phyrexians. Yeah, because you're playing walkers. Okay. So this goes on for about five months of weekly ga Friday games. Hannah asked to start sleeping here on the couch with my friend Adrian. We, we allowed it because some of our sessions would go from like 10 till like 10 to 11 p.m. and we would drink pretty heavily. Her mum was tired of being her taxi and I can't blame her to be honest. There were no problems for weeks but after a longer game night she decided to stay up for a bit while we went to bed. The next morning Adrian woke up without Hannah and came to find out she was in Lee's bed when they woke up. And then the dream campaign became a bit of a nightmare. Oh no. Lee and Adrian really had a difficult falling out. Yeah, no shit. Lee left his dog with me and moved out with Hannah. We continued to play D&D &D because we were so close friends to the fin we were so close to the finale. Essentially, they had allied with the council of, of no, 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 let me just stop you there, mate. Let me just stop you there. All right. Um if I'm Adrian and I find my girlfriend in bed with a friend of mine. I am not playing fucking Dungeons and Dragons with them. No matter how close to the to the end of the campaign we are. Okay. I did a little a little video the other week about not wasting your DM's time. Dude, if I'm the DM in this situation, I'm calling the campaign there. And I'm blaming Lee and the girlfriend. Right? You're a piece of shit for sleeping with your, with your friend's girlfriend. And you're a fucking whore. You two need to get out of my life and get out of my house. Alright? That's what you should have done here. That's what you should have done. You do not continue 
putting your friend in this situation. And then moan when a hobby nightmare occurs. Alright? That's before I go anywhere else in this, in this video. And in this story. Let's move on. Alright, Lee and Adrian really had a difficult falling out. Lee left his dog with me and moved out with Hannah. Fucking piece of shit. We continued to play D&D because we were so close to the finale. Idi idiocy, but moving on. Essentially, they had allied with the Council of Nine Leeches and an extra planar invasion was incoming. At this time, Frexia, all will be all will be one, had dropped and we were excited about it. Again, I don't know what Frexia is. So next time you send in a hobby nightmare, please give me a bit more context about what's going on. Um, anyway, Elesh Norn was invading and they had been defending against the attacks for weeks. They went through a portal to Phyrexia to fight their way down to the core of the planet where her base was. But after this, the players were good and drunk and Lee got into a physical fight with Adrian. And Adrian decided to move out of state to live with his uncle. He is missed by us. But I'm hoping at some point he'll move back. We'll see. Dude, you're fucking deluded. I'm sorry, mate. I, 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 I need to just... I mean, I, I don't know why, but, like, the attitude here has really fucking irked me. Um, you're, you're kind of deluded, man. I, I, I don't know what to say to you. Um, your friend's not coming back. Because you didn't do right by him. Okay? I, I, I don't know whether the lack of context throughout this story... Has really rubbed me up the wrong way, or whether your, your attitude has, like towards your friend, you cared more. You, you've not even mentioned how he felt about about what what you did for him, or, or anything like that. You just gone on about your game, about your 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 make believe world, when your real friend's sitting there, literally corpsing, literally you know, in a bad way. Okay, this is a shitty thing to do. Fuck your campaign. Fuck your dice, fuck your toy soldiers, your friend's in pain. You should have stopped and thought and helped him out. Right? He's not coming back and neither would I. Neither would I. And you're surprised they got into a physical fight? What the fuck's wrong with you? Lee and Hannah moved back in because his name was also on the lease. Since Lee had knocked Hannah up, of course he has, she and her mother move in with us about six weeks after Hannah moved in without asking me. Yeah, this is called, you know, the consequences of your own actions. These people should have been cut off long ago. And if and if his name is on the leash, you should have moved out. Get out of that situation. After a couple of months, I got sick of having to hear Lee and Hannah co const constantly fighting over Lee, knocking her up. And after I asked them to keep it down after midnight, she tried to slap me. Now, I do Tai Chi to keep my joints good. Oh, here we go. And the free bonus is that I can... Catch slower, th slower swings, no problem. I catch your hand and then step back. Worst mistake ever. As soon as I stepped back, everyone began to turn their energy on me. Her mother had been silently working in the other room the whole time. She gave me a hell of a tongue lashing about how, how I was supposed to just let her hit me because she was a woman and that I was a bad person for catching her wrist. Okay, now we know why Hannah acts this way. Because she's had a woman in her life who's told her how to be a massive twat. Um, anyway. Nearly all... Listen, lads. Nearly every woman you come across who acts like an entitled bitch. Pay very close attention to the mother. I bet you the mother's exactly the same way. Do you know what I mean? Exactly the same way. I told her to take responsibility for her daughter's actions. If she, ha if she was to defend them. And she shut up. Now the whole situation was so uncomfortable that I wanted out badly and I got deep into a, into a poor relationship that turned out abusive later for somewhere to go. Luckily for me, our next D&D group had, had, the, the, had the love of my life in it, but that's a story for another day. Thanks for the videos, North. Helps, me, uh, helps remind me that finding a hobby group isn't as easy as it would seem. I'm so happy with where I am now and I'll send a follow-up story in separately. But I met the love of my life and she helped me drop the abusive girl uh, I moved in with to escape. And now we have our own apartment together for a few months. She and I play Warhammer. She has 1,500 points of Tyranids painted beautifully. Okay, cool. Um, Alright, so. One thing I will say, man, is, is that um, don't get too disheartened by what I was saying. Alright, don't be like, oh my god, he doesn't like me. Look, look, look. you made a mistake. 
you made a mistake. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, your friend kind of paid for it there. You know, he's the victim in this. Your friend paid for it. He, he was, you know, things weren't going well there. And you did the wrong thing. And you got punished for it. You know, you were in a situation that was toxic, that was bad, because you put yourself there. You did that. Okay? You should have been with your friend. You should have been with your friend and fucked off Lee and Hannah and gone off on your own. You would have been much happier. I know things have worked out and I'm glad for you. Um, but at the same time, man, I think you've done this guy a huge disservice by not just to get... D dude, you, there needs to be some... Look at your behaviour here. You leave and your, your response to a toxic situation is to replace it with another one. Okay? Hopefully you've learned... Hopefully you've grown up a bit, and hopefully the next time one of your friends has a really shitty moment that, that is not his fault, that is thrown on him by some other treacherous piece of shit who's one of your friends, you can act appropriately, right? And act like an adult, and, uh, you know, have this guy's back, you know? You're the kind of friend that would infuriate me, you know? I've had friends in the past who are constant fence-sitters, and peacekeepers to the point that even when somebody actually does something shitty to me they will still see and try it from the other person's side even when there's no side to see okay even when there's no side to see i've had people lie to me and steal from me and i've had a certain friends of mine still try and see it from the other person's point of view i cut those people off like you can fuck off you're just as treacherous as they are there is no grey area here. Alright? They stole my shit. There's no grey area. Okay? Literally. They talked about me behind my back. There's no grey area. They're a piece of shit. And so are you if you stick up for them. That's what you should have done. The, the ram has breached the wall, mate. No mercy. No mercy. If one of your friends... If you've got three friends who are, who are lads... If you're one of three friends... And one of those lads cheats, like, uh, um, you know, steals the girlfriend of another one. That guy's gone. He's gone. He broke Omerta. He broke bro code. He's gone. He's out. You want to be with a, with a conniving woman so badly? Have her. Goodbye. The lads are going to go over here and you're not fucking welcome anymore. Don't tolerate rats. Don't. Because the minute you do, you open yourself up to being abused by said rat behaviour. You got what you deserved there, man. I'm glad things have worked out for you. And I'm sorry if you think I'm being a bit overly harsh. But, mate, the way you wrote it, I, I would... If I was th this, uh... Who... What was his name? If I was Adrian, I'd, I'd have slapped you in your face. I'm being honest. Like, like I, I'd have been like, dude, you can fuck off as well. Right? If he hasn't spoken to you since, there's probably a good reason. That's probably why. He probably feels like, dude, you, you're, you, you're just as bad as they are, right? That's what, I, that's what I'd be thinking, if it was me. I'd be like, no, mate, you're just as bad as they are. You're taking their side, and you want me to finish your stupid fucking D&D &D campaign? Right? You want me to... You, dude, D&D &D doesn't matter. My girlfriend cheated on me with somebody else at the fucking table. No, I'm not coming to your stupid make-believe D&D game, all right? And if you take their side, you're as bad as them. Go fuck yourself. Again, the ram has touched the wall. No mercy. Shitty behaviour. If you've got a mate who breaks, who breaks bro code, if he breaks a murder, ostracise him. Alright? If you go out on a night out and you say things to your friends and, some, uh, and somehow what you said gets back to your, to your girlfriend and it turns out that one of your friends told them, ostracise him. I did exactly that. I did exactly that to one of my best friends. I was best. I was the best man at his wedding, right? Literally the best man at his wedding. Uh, my baby mum at the time, um, we had split up a while ago, and you know we weren't talking, and I was trying to get access to my kid and all that, and I'd go for a pint with my friend and a few others, and I'd tell them about what was going on in my life, how university was going. And things like that. And, and I was in a new relationship, right? Um, my baby mum somehow found out that I was in a new relationship and started getting really antsy and making my life really difficult to see my kid, right? Turns out, 
my so-called best friend, who I, was, who I was the best man at at his wedding, had told, had told my ex, my, my baby mum, right, about my new relationship and all of that, when they were just talking and having a little conflap. I cut him out of my fucking life completely. Absolutely. Told him why and got rid of him. Literally got rid of him. Said, you want to go with her? You want to be a treacherous little twat? You go over there, right? You go over there. But you're not welcome around me anymore. I can't trust you. You broke a murder. You broke bro code. You're a piece of shit. Go over there. You're a traitor. Go over there. All right? Enjoy. You know? Yeah. Get him out, son. All right. Next time you like me. Aeon says, Well, it's time for another tale from the Brain Trust. Hi, North. It's Aeon here. Hey, Aeon. How's it going? Namely, your representative from the WhatsApp group for disgruntled hobby professionals, i.e. people who either work for Games Workshop, currently work for Games Workshop, or work in the hobby in general. I am actually working for Games Workshop currently as a manager, and this story took place two years ago this March. So, on the near anniversary of it, I thought I'd send it in. Okay, cool. Oh, let me take a sip of tea first. Oh, love a cup of tea. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right. Uh, I've been running a store for a year or two by this point, and by the point when this story starts, and things were going pretty well. I'd kept my head below the parapet in terms of corporate cliques. I was just nice enough to be known as a cool guy, and just brown-nosing enough to meld into cliques without actually being a part of them. Dude, that's a big thing. That's huge. If you can brown nose at Games Workshop, just enough that you're not about to throw up and it keeps you below the parapet, good. In other words, I played the political game well to get my feet under the table, past my, my probation, and keep them there. Now I've been here too long for them to just cast me aside, and so the constant hazing, snide comments, and issues with upset corporate idiots over nothing that happens at the start of everybody's Games Workshop career, kind of tailed off. I mean that too. The vast majority of those who leave tend to do so in the first two years of their employment because corporate and others really put you through the ringer to see if you fit in, quote-unquote, if you know what I mean. Most people tell them to fuck off and leave like you did. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm with you on that one. Once you pass your probation at Games Workshop, and you've been there for like maybe two years. That's when, from what I've heard, that's when it stops. That's when the hazing stops. That's when the, the snide comments go away. Like Aeon says here. You know what I mean? Because they can't get rid of you very easily. So, you know, you're in sort of a thing. Anyway. So, on with the story. The store was doing well. But after the pandemic, I think every Games Workshop store nosedived quite a lot as people were so used to ordering online rather than through a store. I got around that by giving away a free White Dwarf magazine, unofficially, with total deniability and the threat of a permanent ban from my store if I found anyone had bubbled me to HQ about it, with every mail order in the store, with which you get a free delivery that was worth over £50 or more. That tended to get a lot of people to order through me, which was great, and for a while, my mail order sales made through my till on my store computer outstripped my in-store sales. That's really clever. That's really clever. So, if you want something online, you can buy it from my store computer. And if it's above £50, I'll give you a free White Dwarf. That's really clever. Because the amount of White Dwarfs that Games Workshop throw away from their stores, man, is ridiculous. So you've taken a bit of stock that isn't really working for you. And you've made it work for you. Good lad. Eventually, though... Oh, also, it's a bit of stock that doesn't really turn up on the uh, stock checks. Because there's a new White Dwarf every month. Do you know what I mean? So that you don't really do stock checks of them. Very clever. Eventually, though, that started to even out. I started to really push making sure I had the exact models that people needed in my store. So... 
If they wanted something pretty obscure, I'd make a call to HQ and make sure I had it in the very next shipment sent to the store the following Thursday. This developed a reputation of dependability that saw my customers returning and keeping the store afloat in terms of sales. Of course, I allowed gaming in my store too, and even though I now cannot do gaming in the store thanks to the complete, unofficial but endorsed ban on it in UK Games Workshop stores, I do have a GoFundMe page where we all collectively rent out a unit literally 50 feet away from the store in which to play every day. So every evening from 4pm, there is somewhere for the guys to play still. Again, dude, you're, you're a really good manager. No matter how hard I bobbed and weaved, however, the sales kept going down and I kept getting punched in the face. Dude, you don't deserve this. Like you, You're doing really, really well. Let's get to the main figure of our tale, alright? Pete. This dude was one of those customers. No, not a neckbeard or socially awkward person beyond the normal hobby quirks. This guy was extremely condescending, constantly saying things that generally rubbed people up the wrong way and things like that. I called him Walking Dark Souls. <laughs> Jesus. Which I loved, well, which he loved, sorry. But he didn't realise it was actually a criticism. Okay, I've got to hear this. I've got to hear this. I've seen this kind of dude on the channel before, and I quite like Dark Souls. I cannot hide the fact, though, that a lot of people who play those games tend to throw their entire life's worth into being good at the game, and if you don't have 54 hours to throw into smashing your own head against the wall, they tell you to get good and all that nonsense. That is the kind of argument somebody makes... Oh, uh, sorry. That is the kind of argument somebody makes... And only comes along when you have no job. No worth in your life apart from the game. Not everybody wants to come home from a stressful job and, and support their family only to have this game unfairly stress them out. I've completed all those games multiple times, but the community around them was Pete in a nutshell. He was rude and arrogant without actually having anything to be all that arrogant about. He had no job, but had money from an inheritance that he lived off of. He would lord it over other people in the store by literally telling them he could afford to buy things they could not and they actually had jobs while he got to sit at home all day painting his models and nothing else. This is the kind of guy we are dealing with. Yeah, a, a massive piece of shit, yeah. Lads, as I said, I quite like Dark Souls, but I like it for what it is and only play it when I have the time and mental patience to put up with it. I'm putting this paragraph here to kind of save... <laughs> to kind of save North's co comment section from being overly toxic. Having a go at people who don't want or, or like that, that's some toxic bullshit. And Pete was a toxic bullshit person. Not only that, he was a fucking traitor, which is not something I would ever accuse the Dark Souls lads of being. Those boys are bloody loyal to a fault to their game and their principles in said game. I didn't know the traitor side of Pete though, until quite a while after he acquired the Walking Dark Souls moniker. Okay, alright. I, I see, that's fair. I, I can see that, that's fair. Alright. Um, hmm. I would never, like, have a go at you for what you like. I may take the piss, like if you're a fairy or something. I may take the piss, like, that you're a bit of a de degenerate, you know? But it's always tongue-in-cheek. It's always, like, you know, like you're getting a ribbing at, at, at the local bar by a friend of yours for wearing a tail because, you know, you're a fucking degenerate. But um, in terms of Dark Souls, it's not for me. But that doesn't mean it, it's not for anyone else, you know what I mean? You, you enjoy your Dark Souls. I've given my opinion on it in the past. Um, I think it's for tryhards. I really do. And I think the... I think uh, Dark Souls in general is a badly made game by a bad game company. Sorry, just saying. And, and until uh, the the fires of Rubicon, that was really good, right? Um, but all Dark Souls was to me was an excuse because they say, "Oh, our combat's really bad." Oh, we'll make it part of the game that the combat's really bad. Our hitboxes are terrible. I'm not very well optimized. Oh, we'll make it part of the game that our hitboxes are terrible. I'm not very. Do you know what I mean? 
Uh, you know, our, our game's unfair and really, really ridiculous to play. Oh, we'll make it part of the game. Like, you know, the first Dark Souls was all that, man. It was like Demon Souls, Dark Souls, they were they were all that. They were not very well-made games where, where the game not being very well-made was part of the game, quote-unquote. It was a con. It was a con. Literally a con. I, I, I played Ghost of Tsushima on Legendary Difficulty where one hit kills you. That's difficulty. That's a difficult game. Because it gives you all of the tools, right? And it's fair. And if you're good enough, you'll beat it even on that difficulty. If you're good enough. Right? All the hitboxes are spot on. Literally. It's quick, it's responsive, it's spot on, and it's fair. Not something that Dark Souls can be accused of. Right? It's not quick, it's not responsive, and it's not fair. You know? To me, that's a badly made game. If you enjoy that, all power to you. All power to you. Um, I don't really look at the fan base as a, as a toxic lot of people. I, I, I don't really care. But I, I'll give you my opinion on the game. And to me, it's not a very well-made game. That's my opinion. I just, you know. Played all of them. Completed two of them. Uh, done Elden Ring. You know. And it, it's not it's not my thing. I, I did them all last year. I did the first two last year. And then Elden Ring. And yeah. It, it was good to like sit there and... You know, grind for a bit and, and turn your brain off, but nah, it's just it was, it, it was a genius piece of a thing that he's done, like that that they that they did there uh, from Soft, is that they they made a bad game and then convinced you it was good. Genius. Anyway, um, moving on. So as I said, I used to get people their their orders sent to the store, even if it was a bit of a niche item. You wanted striking scorpions, I'd get them for you. That kind of thing. There was, however, another local store nearby that was not a Games Workshop store. This place was a pigsty. I have no other words for it. It, st it stank of rank body odour. Only played games on one small hobby table in their, in their joint. And were incredibly offended when I refused to send our gamers there once Games Workshop brought the hammer down... On games in my store. The thing is, I wanted a nice place for my guys to play in. That other store was full of arguments, rage, tantrums, and foul smells, whilst people, grown men, argued about their toy cards. That's why I stopped going myself. Pete, though, unsurprisingly, was a regular there, as well as at my store, as he had a lot of free time. So, the weird stuff in this nightmare occurs when the following happens several times with several different people. Customer A. Wants a specific model I do not currently have. Me. I have no issue with that. I order it for them in my next mail order or I order it right there for them on my computer. Customer A. Returns apologetically days later and cancels their order with me getting their money back from my till and not return to their card as you couldn't do that at that point in the store and saying they sourced the model already elsewhere. That sucks, man. For those of you who don't know, if you go into a games workshop and you get a return on anything and it'll come out of their till, whether electronically or otherwise, which will basically mean that if they've sold like £100 worth of models that day and you return £200 worth of models, they've lost £100. Their store is negative £100 for that day. That looks really bad. It looks really... I, I, head office hate it. And they will get on your case if you do shit like that. Because it means that you've sold things that you weren't meant to sell. That kind of thing. This guy's not done that. He's done an honest sale. And somehow, these guys are getting sourced elsewhere. Which is really unlucky. Me. Despondent. I do as they ask with a smile on my face though. Realising that I am now a hundred quid or so down on my daily takings, yeah. I could not stop mail orders from happening in the store. I'd have been sacked for something like that. So this pattern kept repeating. Very frustrating and very disheartening. Until one day another customer, Dave, heads over to me and says the following. Alright mate, can I have a word? Uh, sure, I say. It's about Pete, he says. I went into the other store there just to check it out and I saw him there. Every time somebody there headed in and mentioned coming to you for a mail order, 
he would tell him to cancel the order and get it there because it was 20% off. He's been doing that for ages. Just thought you might want to know, mate. Not much you can do, I know. Just seemed kind of a shitty with the fact that he uses your gaming space and stuff like that. Wow. Wow. You can say that again, says Aeon. I was fucking livid. I went to others who had cancelled their orders with me and asked them what changed their mind on their orders with me and, you guessed it, it was Pete. Every. Single. Time. I actually went to a few other Games Workshop managers I trusted and asked for their advice and they all told me to ban him. To be honest, he had not technically done anything wrong but I just could not have a guy in my store who was trying to tank my fucking business even after all the things I did to keep our store a happy place and included him in it. Yeah, um, he, he, he has technically done nothing wrong. You're just giving other customers a, a, a recommendation. But, mate, there are ways and means. He's literally tanking your business, yeah. He's making sure you're losing hundreds of pounds a month. You're losing thousands of pounds to this guy. Nah, get him out. Get him out. The next time he came in... I asked to have a word. I asked him to have a word with me outside. I told him I was banning him as he was actively driving customers away from my store and costing me thousands of pounds. There you go. We are in the thousands. When he asked why, I laid it out for him. He told me he didn't agree, as he could say what he wanted, and would be lodging a complaint with HQ. I told him he was within his rights to do so and asked him to leave the premises. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Those of you, by the way, who are listening to this and taking this guy's side, taking a, um, Pete's side, well, it's free speech. Yeah, it is free speech. Yeah, it is. But do you know what? If I've, if my, if you're out there in the world, right, okay, and you say something that I find completely offensive and I hate it, I'm within my rights to say, don't come into my place of business. Don't come into my, into my, into my private property. I'm within my rights to do that, right? Exactly the same thing here. Although, this guy's actually having his livelihood affected by this dude. He's a rat and he's coming in and literally trying to tank his business. Fuck that dude. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Anyway. He did lodge that complaint and HQ did call me to ask why I'd banned him. I told him he was a toxic guy about the store, and he was. And what's more, he was costing me a lot in sales. That's all they needed to hear, and they upheld the ban. It was such a harsh lesson for me to not trust anyone on face value when you are running your own business. Always be aware of snakes in the grass, and if someone acts like a piece of shit, that is normally exactly what they are. Get them out of your space, or at the very least, quarantine them away from your business and other things you can't afford to have ruined. Thanks for all you do, Noel. Speak to you soon. Aeon. Okay. Um, the thing is, Aeon, right? One second, let me take a sip of tea. Thing is, how do you stop him from ruining your business further? You know what I mean? So, how do you, how do you... Because him being in your store wasn't the thing that was allowing him to, to you know, ruin the store for you. It was him being a, being a dickhead in, in, an, in another store and getting customers to cancel their orders with you, right? I would have, I maybe would have tried talking to him about it first and being like, listen, man, you know, please don't do that. You cost me a lot of money, right? And then see what he does. But to be honest with you, um, I, I get why you did it. It must have been cathartic to just get him out of there and say, you, there, was you, you there are consequences to your actions. Go fuck yourself, leave. You know what I mean? I can understand why you did it, honestly. Um, it just sucks. It, it just sucks when, when you... And you are completely right. If, if you get bad feelings from somebody, like whether it be a, a fellow nerd or, or, or anybody for that matter, you need to keep them away from the parts of your life that you can't afford to have ruined or tainted. Absolutely. Quarantine them away. I've done this with role-playing a few times when people have come in uh, and, and wanted to play one of my games and I've just not liked them or... You know, they, they rubbed me up the wrong way in a, in a certain way where I, I got a feeling that I was like, oh, I don't like that. Do you know what I mean? And, and I've had to say, no, mate, I'm not doing any campaigns, even though I am. Because I'm not having them come in 
and ruin and, and taint and poison this thing that I really like. You know? Because they will. You know? If it bleats like a goat, smells like a goat, it's probably a goat. Right? They will. If it looks like a dickhead, smells like a dickhead, acts like a dickhead, it's probably a dickhead. You know? Anyway. I love you a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow for another 40k rant. We will be discussing with Games Workshop managers what they really, really hate about their jobs. Hmm. We've done loves. Now we'll do hates. See you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye now.